Dick Moves, a comedy in four parts. This is part three. It is dawn, and a white cargo van sits in the driveway of a quiet suburban neighborhood. From inside the late model van, a slight rustling and groaning can be heard. A small, middle-aged, but fit man, Barnaby, energetically bounds out of the van to the back and throws open the doors. A shaft of sunlight floods over a crumpled form sleeping within. Dick Redford groans and writhes like a vampire in a tanning salon. Scattered snapshots and Polaroids of Dick in various states of his career cover him like a most uncomfortable quilt. Dick covers his eyes. Bastard! Dick pulls a pair of oversized sunglasses from his pocket and stands, sending the photos helter-skelter. He slams his head on the roof of the van. Ah, bastard! Dick stumbles to the doors, misjudging his footing. He tumbles out of the van and onto the driveway, ending up on his back. He lays there in the driveway, shades asunder, and with Barnaby looking down on him, Dick glares back. Bastard. Morning, Dick. You all right? No, Barnaby. I appear to have been drugged, kidnapped, and placed in the back of your van, and I'm trying to piece it together. Well, uh, you came back here last night... You're not allowed to talk to me until you bring me a coffee. I've got a right fucker behind the eyes and my mouth tastes like the bottom of Courtney Love's Uber. Barnaby, ever the handy assistant, produces a large cup of corporate coffee and a little tray of pastries. Triple calf, single decaf, low foam cappuccino. Mmm, so you can get some coffee. Let's not put your handprints in cement just yet. Why are all my precious mementos scattered about like broken promises? Memories, treasures of my past, scattered on the moist pavement. Barnaby scrambles to scoop up the pictures. At least you got some work done on the coffee table book. They were in order until you spilled them. Yeah, I don't think it was... (sighs) This is going to take me days to get back into order. I still can't find that picture of Kate Moss with the sombrero pissing into a Pepsi bottle. We've spent years looking for that photo, Dick. Are you sure it exists? Dick stares at Barnaby blandly. (sighs) It was me... Kate Moss, Gene Rayburn, and a very young Brian Williams extremely high on Molly while sharing a pop-up trailer at the second ever Burning Man Festival. That's not something you make up. Barnaby continues to pick up the pictures. Careful with them. They're irreplaceable. (sighs) So, in reverse chronological order, why am I waking up in a van? Well, you'd been uh, somewhat over-celebrating, and by the time we got back here, it was rather late, and Short so- sentences, Barnaby. Short sentences, please. Fifi has officially banned you from the house and the guest house. Oh. Why? Well, she was pretty annoyed at you, partly because of the singing falsetto versions of ABBA songs at 3 a.m. thing, but mostly for the going-on-tour thing. Ah, the tour! That was the one good bit from last night! Putting the band back together, playing sold-out shows. Uh, Admittedly in Germany, but but still. uh. It's not booked yet, Dick. Ah, but it will be. Dick gets a text. It is from an Andrew Ridgely from the 80s super duo Wham. Ah, Ridgely again. I'll wham him right up his ass. What does Ridgely want? Somehow he's found out about the tour and is clearly upset that Mr. George Michael has passed. No comeback for Mr. Ridgely. Unless he's teamed up with Ricky Martin. That might be awful enough. You think he's jealous? Well, he sent a Photoshop picture of me, Vanilla Ice, and MC Hammer and what looked like Burger King outfits. What do you think, genius? Just ignore him, Dick. You'll only make things worse. I do not. You really think sending those dildos to his house was a mature move? Yeah, what could I do? And he ranked me as number four on his top ten list of disastrous ex-rock stars on Twitter. The nerve! Although it did get me 3,000 new followers on my socials. Just squeak past that bandana, banana, baboon, boo, Brett Michaels. Poison indeed. Bit selfish of Fifi to be upset at my pending return to fame, though, isn't it? I think the problem is that you promised her you were here to reunite the family and absolutely wouldn't be sneaking off on tour like you've done at every point in her life so far. Hmm. Yeah, I see. Seems like a bit of a narrow viewpoint. <laughs> That's the problem with people, Burnaby. Their stilted horizons need to be forcefully widened. (laughs) Not to worry, I'm her father. I'll sort this out. Dick strides as purposefully as his hangover will allow him to Fifi's front door and rings the bell. The door opens a crack on its chain. Fifi looks out menacingly. Dick grabs the tray of pastries from Barnaby. 
Morning, darling. I've brought you some rather nice imported tart sort of things. The door slams shut. After a beat, the door reopens. A headless Dick Redford cardboard standee is tossed through the slot, followed moments later by a Dick Redford standee head. Shit, I've just taped that together again. I'll just be outside, love, when you feel like a chat. Barnaby, you could have been a bit more proactive and brought some better bloody pastries. Later. Christ. Later in... Bastard. Prick. Later in Fifi's kitchen, Fifi sits feeding the baby some gloppy baby food with an annoyed expression. Her husband, Marty, stares out the window. The van's still there. Are you sure you won't talk to him? No, not for all the missed birthdays, births, and weddings. He doesn't get to come back here and act like my feelings don't matter. Fifi readjusts for the baby. I'm sorry, honey. It's not you. It's that big, dumb mound of cow crap in our front yard. You want me to tell him to go away? I can be quite imposing. I've been practicing. Mm, it'll be my 10 a.m. appointment. He's already late. If you could just feed the baby... And throw heavy objects at my father if he tries to weasel his way back in. You got it, Doctor. Fifi opens the door to reveal Tyler, a somewhat fraught-looking 15-year-old. Hey, what's up, Dr. Booth? Sorry I'm late. The door swings a little wider to reveal Dick. I was just talking to your dad. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. No, it's all right, it's all right, he's cool. Tyler here's a musician, you know. Played me some of his whoop whoop music. <laughs> it's quite good. Eh? Very much like what I did with Brian Eno after we smoked nutmeg in 85. Tyler is my patient. You are not allowed to interfere with my business on my doorstep. He said he used to be a drummer. Oh, yes, you could really smack the crap out of them, old thief. I was eight and thinking of you while I beat them. Dick grins at her and holds up a tray of new, slightly more fancy pastries. Oh, fancy pastry. Oh, fine. I'll deal with you later. Go. Wait in the kitchen until my session's over. Dick happily trots into the house. Fifi steers Tyler into her office. Oh, hey. If you ever need any trap mixes redone... Dick gives Tyler the thumbs up. Whoop, whoop. Wob, wob, wob. <laughs> Love it, mate. <laughs> An hour later, Fifi enters the kitchen to find Dick, Marty, and the baby at the kitchen table. Dick, not noticing Fifi, spots the baby food and tries a spoonful. He winces, but then decides to finish off the jar. The fancy pastries are all gone, as is the coffee. Dick looks glassy-eyed. Marty looks rather pleased with himself. So, where is it? Oh, the pastries. Yeah, uh, we were going to save you some, but little Annie was quite partial to the jammy puffs, and uh, I'm not sure, really. Some sort of pastry frenzy seemed to have set in. Not the pastries. My apology. Dick and I have been having a talk. Dick pulls a face at Fifi to indicate just how awful an experience this has been for him. Dad agrees that the tour is a bad idea and he'd rather be here with us. Richard. Really? Pfft, yeah, another tour? I don't need it. Not when I've got my family. I'll probably just end up punching Rod in the neck for being such a cock anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, no tour. No. I see. And that's a promise, is it? Dick gets a text message. He sneaks it out of his pocket and takes a look at his phone. It's from his manager, Sven. It reads, Meet up with Rod this afternoon regarding tour contracts, question mark? Of course, love. Nowhere I'd rather be than here with you, Jammy Annie, and... Uh, uh. Dick glances at Marty and makes an incredibly lame gesture to include him on the list. Fifi studies her dad, trying to figure out if he's as full of shit as he almost certainly is. No tour. Absolutely not. Dick smiles his best smile as he texts Sven back under the table, writing, We're back, baby. You're on parole, Dick. Dick jumps up and gives Fifi a hug. He grabs a couple of sealed baby food jars from the counter, stuffing them in his pockets. You're the best, darling. And no more messing with my patience. Oh, yeah, I like that boy. You know, it reminded me of myself at that age. Strange music, lots of drugs, alienatingly good looks. Dick, he's a serial arsonist whose parents are at the end of their rope. Ha! See, I knew he had a spark in him. <laughs> I'm all there is between him and a detention center. The last thing he needs is you leading him astray. I will be singularly responsible for his mental health. 
I'll just go freshen up. Dick pats the baby and heads towards the guest house. Sometime later, Dick is eating baby food from one of the little purloined jars. He takes down a framed photo from a shelf and ponders it. Fifi, Gwen, and the baby. He places it on a stack of liked framed photos and replaces it with a framed picture of Michael Bolton and himself pretending to strangle each other. Dick smiles and then replaces all the family photos with an entire gallery of Dick Redford shots. Barnaby enters, holding a bright, lime-green chauffeur's hat. He watches as Dick finishes off the jar of baby food. Mmm. Well, this baby food is surprisingly good. Pre-chewed. I think I'm onto something. Order me a case. And where, where the fuck have you been? I've called and called. Sorry, Dick. I was being proactive. I've got a job. Well, yes, I know you've got a job. And part of it involves answering the phone when I call. I mean, a job that pays. I pay you, Barnaby. Well... I brought you dinner out the van last week. The salad you left on the dash? I didn't tell you not to eat it. Same thing. I know things are going to be great when the tour starts, but that might not be for a couple of months and I really need the money, so... Oh, Christ, would you stop feeling so sorry for yourself for being poor? We've got bigger problems to worry about. What do you mean? I've made a small tactical error. I accidentally told Fifi that I wasn't going on tour. What do you mean we're not going on tour? Now, obviously we're going on tour. I just... I got stuck in the kitchen with Bloody Marty for an hour and I had to say something to make him shut up and stop putting boring all over me. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be a problem when Fifi finds out. I mean, you think? I was sort of hoping things would just kind of work themselves out in a Dick Redford sort of way. (laughs) Um... Anyway, you've got to drive me to that horrible little bar. We're meeting Sven and Rod to sort out those tour contracts. A massive grin spreads over Barnaby's face. Dick grins as well, jumping up and patting Barnaby on the back. As they head out the door, Dick notices that Barnaby is carrying a lime green chauffeur's hat. What in God's name is that? In Barnaby's van, Barnaby is wearing his green chauffeur's hat. Dick sits in the back looking very irritated. Next to him is a complete stranger, Barnaby's fair. This is your fucking job? You're a cabbie. It's an internet car service. Just to make a little extra cash. Greencabbie.com Dick examines the stranger sitting next to him. <laughs> but he could be anybody. A murderer, a rapist, a dentist. He's probably secretly taking pictures of me to sell to TMZ. So I'm fiddling with his phone. Do you mind? I'm actually paying for this ride. Yeah, right, just keep your snaps to yourself, okay? Not in the mood for Barnaby to take any selfies of us. Look, I have no idea who you are. I'm just trying to get to a meeting. Is this guy paying half my fare? <sighs> like hell. Uh, sit, sit in the front if you want, Dick. <laughs> I'm not sitting in the front like a dirty roadie. God, I should fire you for this embarrassment. Jesus, dude, that's kind of a dick move. Ah, surprise, surprise, you see? Knows exactly who I am. All right, man, just let me out here. It's close enough. I'm not tipping for this shit. Barnaby pulls over the van and the passenger jumps out. Barnaby cheerily tries to smooth things over. Thanks for the fare. Don't forget to rate me. I'm also on Pinterest. Pin this... The passenger gives his middle finger to Barnaby and another to Dick as they drive off. Well, that was degrading. You see, the public is so awful. I'm sorry, Dick. I just thought I could sneak in a fare. It was on the way. You need to take your life more seriously. Really, Dick? Yes. What's a carton of milk cost? Less than a thousand dollars. That's cheating. I am not saying another word to you until you take that ridiculous hat off. I won't. I like it. I have a head for hats. Ugh. Barnaby finally pulls into the bull and last. Inside, Gavin mops up the bar with a rag. A hardened lesbian sits drinking Irish coffee. Dick enters, followed by Barnaby. Gavin lightens. Ladies and lesbian, Dick Redford. The hardened lesbian looks up and shrugs. Ah, no need for the fanfare. How about a drink? Dick, it's only 10.30. Right, a coffee then for Barnaby and a crystal head martini, very dry with three sustainably farmed olives for myself. I have shop right vodka and old yellow things that may or may not be olives. Done! Gavin nods, putting together the drinks. 
He presents the martini-esque drink to Dick. Dick stares at it for a moment. Ah! We'll call it the Dick Redford! He takes a small sip and winces. Mmm! Oh! Oh, so bracing! And room temperature! Quite a show last night, Dick. Yes, it's good to get the juices flowing again. Good preamble to a marvelous tour. Tour? Dick's going back on tour with Planet Cool. Oh, hey, hey, a reason to celebrate. Yes, I'll have another one. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's a good idea, Dick. You've got to keep your head about you. Silence, greencrappy.com. Life is to be celebrated, not pondered with straightness. Dick nods to the lesbian. Am I right, sister? If you're buying, buddy. Another Dick Redford then, Gavin. Gavin plops down two more drinks in front of the lesbian and Dick. Dick sucks down the martini, pulling the yellow olive-like garnish into his lips. He leans into Barnaby's face and vacuums it into his mouth, munching it loudly. (laughs) Rockstar life! I don't think it's funny. I'm going to the men's room. Barnaby stands, slamming his green hat onto the bar and heads into the men's room. Dick turns to Gavin, contemplating the hat. I don't know what his problem is. I can handle my intoxicants. You know, I once flew Quincy Jones's jet high on dexedrim and methadone. Needless to say, Quincy wouldn't board the plane, but I flew that shit bird like an ace till the pilot subdued me. Still got to the show on time. A Latino kid delivering beer enters, scooting a hand truck into the bar. Gavin nods at him. Juan? Juan nods back, flipping through his clipboard to review his order. Through the window, we see a town car arrive out front. Dick. Panics slightly. Oh, tripe. Here comes the bleached asshole himself. Dick manically begins laughing as if he's been having a great time. Dick insinuates for the lesbian to laugh as well, putting Gavin's green hat on her head. Rod enters, looking good, but kind of like an asshole in a flowing white suit. Dick grabs Juan, pulling him into the group, rolling his hands to insinuate for him to join in on the Laughter. (laughs) 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 All right, mate. (laughs) (laughs) Barnaby returns, bewildered at all the laughing. Dick throws his arm around him. Barnaby joins in, confused. (laughs) 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 All right, mate. Dick finally turns, acting surprised at Rod's entrance. Rod, I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> We're all laughing so hard. I... <laughs> Dick could always get him laughing. Dick stands extending his hand. Rod goes in for a hug. Dick is uncomfortable. I've missed you, my friend. Yes, well, um, haven't been missing. Still have email, you know, which you never returned, and, uh, and text, which you didn't return also. And, and I mailed a letter, actually, which... Um... Oh, I have people that do all that. But I tell you what, I'll have them all fired. Rod stares blandly at Dick. Well, that'd be a shit thing to do. Think of the family's man. They're pets. I was kidding. Who are your friends? Barnaby and Gavin smile. Juan shrugs. The lesbian jauntily tips the green hat at him. Dick turns around and looks them up and down. This is Gavin, the best bartender in California. So great, in fact, we're starting a drink line together. (laughs) And this is my good... uh, Lesbian friend, who also happens to be the president of the gay and lesbian chapter out here. Cheers. (laughs) The lesbian has no idea what he's talking about. Dick turns to Juan. And this, uh... He's just a fan, isn't he? Dick leans in to Rod. Some of us have crossed into the Latino market. (laughs) Rod quietly mouths the word, ole, as he turns to Barnaby. Barnaby, you old goat herder. Ah, oh, Rod, my boy. So happy to see you. Dick sighs, pulling Rod away by his sleeve. Oh, join me, Rod. Join me. Rod rolls his eyes and joins Dick at a table. I'll order for you if you want, but you really should try some of this. Dick procures another jar of baby food from his pocket. Full of antioxidants, organic uh, uh, sweet peas, raisins. You want a spoon? Rod looks at the jar oddly then waves it off. No, it's okay. I have a lunch. Okay, well, uh, what time is your lunch? Uh, 20 minutes ago. Huh. Back at the bar, Barnaby turns to the lesbian, noticing his hat on her head. How'd you get my hat? The flirty one gave it to me. Yes, well, it's mine. Gonna have it back. Get your own. 
Juan, with his clipboard of papers and a pen, does his best to get Gavin to sign his beer order. Dick waves him over. I'll sign that for you, amigo. Juan is confused. He watches as Gavin grunts and disappears into the back. Juan joins the table. Dick snatches Juan's pen and autographs his clipboard paperwork. Uh, To my biggest Latino fan, keep on dreaming, you'll get there yet. Dick Redford. There you go, mate. Dick smiles, blindly handing the clipboard back to Juan. Uh, Three copies, man. Dick snatches back the clipboard and repeats signing. Uh, To my biggest Latino fan, keep on dreaming. You'll get there yet, Dick Redford. (sighs) To my biggest Latino, blah, 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 blah. Dick Redford. There you are. Dick hands the clipboard back. Rod shakes his head. It's good to see that you're up to your old antics. (laughs) Well, you should know about antics. (laughs) Dick points at Rod as he talks to Juan. You know, this guy spent a lot of years shooting organic Malaysian heroin into virtually every body part. I mean, his eyeballs, even. (laughs) Dick mimes this enthusiastically while Rod shakes his head. Juan looks on bewildered. You had quite the problem. Yes, well, I'm clean now. Yeah, clean, clean, or Keith Rich is clean. Keith is a friend. Right, yeah, same here. Off of Rod's doubting look, Dick pulls out his phone. I have an email from him somewhere. It's, uh, here it is. That's a photoshopped picture of you twerking with a bald Britney Spears. Dick rechecks his phone. Ridgely. He's very upset. I think he's jealous of our tour. It's on here somewhere. I just, hold on. It's okay, I believe you. Yeah, I know you believe me. I just wanted to show you how intimate it was. It was... It's very intimate. Uh, I think we were on a boat or something. In waltzes Sven, their manager. He pulls up a chair. Ah, our fearless manager. Sven smiles, patting Rod on the shoulder. Dick takes Sven's hand weirdly, oddly kissing the top of it. Aha! Ah, and my dear friend. Sven does his best to detach himself from Dick's strange grasp. Finally... He shakes Dick off. I've brought contracts, boys. Everyone's very excited. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this does pose an interesting problem. Uh, Could prove very difficult to coordinate availability. Well, Rod has cleared a schedule for it. It's priority numero uno. Well, uh, I've got some important socially disruptive things I'm working on right now. And we're just at the tip of really blowing up the hell paradigm, you know. Sven and Rod stare holes through Dick. Okay, well, we don't want to keep you from blowing anything up, Doc. Why don't you just get a quick photo for the website and leave you to figure it out in pairs? Everything you need's right here. Sven tosses down the contracts and pulls out his camera phone. Dick jostles for his usual right side of his face position. I think this is your good side, Rod, if I may. Sven snaps a shot. Rod has a leading man smile. Dick looks like someone's trying to insert something into his anus. Dick cranes his neck to get a look at the picture, but Sven is already gathering his stuff. Dick starts to protest, but is cut short. I'll send you this for the coffee table, Bucky Putton Degada. Get the contract back to me tonight if you can. I want to tie this up with the Germans before they approach Colony Bard for a union. Sven and Rod rise. Guess I'll see you on tour, buddy. And they're gone. Dick finishes his martini. How rude. Look at that. Not even staying for a drink. Dick composes himself and flips through the contract. Let's see. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Money. Dick grabs a pen from Barnaby's pocket. He signs at the bottom of the page, flipping to a new one. Yada, 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 fame. <laughs> Again, he signs, flipping to the next page. Lawyery, waffly nonsense. And Dick signs again and pauses. Two million dollars. Oh, yes. This is a very good contract. <laughs> Dick signs the final page. Barnaby looks worried. Do you think we should have an attorney look that over? Barnaby, <laughs> 99% of what attorneys know, I know. I'm not paying some pasty, cave-dwelling pedestrian in a tie for 1% knowledge and a 5% take. That would just be stupid. Gavin looks up from the bar. Yeah, it might be an idea to actually read it, though. (laughs) Yeah, right. Says the face ache who works behind a bar. Now, I've read quite enough of this contract to know that it's excellent. It's got wonderful font. Gavin throws up his hands and moves off to stock the beer that Juan delivered. Dick taps the fully signed contract. Right, Barnaby! Get a copy of this back to the bastards. I saw a fax machine behind the bar. Great! It'll be done and dusted before they make it back to the office. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Barnaby takes the contract and in Gavin's absence decides it'll be okay to hop behind the bar and fax it. Dick's already up and ambling towards the door. Barnaby hurriedly finishes faxing and hops back over the bar and dashes after Dick. Dick Redford, making it happen. Dick News, a pod play in four parts. Part three starring Gabriel Hogan, Ingra Cadronel, Hugh Ross, Linda Borg, Tim Blake, Joel Elliott, Dave Harris, and Ned Douglas. The pod play was written by David B. Harris and Ned Douglas. Original music by Moses Luster and the Hollywood Lights. Additional vocals by Ryan Malloy. Our website is thepodplay.com. Look for our other productions wherever you download or listen to podcasts. The pod play is brought to you in part by Strand Brewing Company. Refining the craft beer movement in Los Angeles since 2009, Strand Brewing grew from a couple of guys in one overloaded and beat up minivan to a statewide distribution brew house that includes restaurants up and down the West Coast to Costco and Whole Foods and a thriving 36,000 foot brew space slash tap room. I caught up with Joel, owner and brewer, to discuss the common thread in any successful startup, creativity and the skill of putting one foot in front of the other. I believe in doing the right thing and doing the best for the greatest number of people. I really wish that we lived in a world where more people could trust a look in the eye and a handshake. You know, we've created a a place here where people who you might think otherwise would never talk to each other are sitting at a table together enjoying each other's company over beer. Because it all happens here. The ideas happen here, the brewing happens here, and then the pouring happens here. My beer is my beer. Yes. I love that I live and die by that. You know, really, it's there's really very little room for error. I enjoy that. And if there's a zombie apocalypse in the meantime, you have to kill some zombies. Sure, yeah, I'm totally willing to kill zombies. That's part of brewing. <laughs> Everyone knows that. To hear more on this and other successful creative business owners talk about their own thoughts on the creative process that drives their businesses, check out thepodplay.com slash drivers or search it out anywhere you get your podcasts. Strand Brewing Company, bringing you the best beachside beer since 2009.